Sikat ka na, Dusty, ha? People are looking for you. People are looking for you on the vlog. Say hi, you're a celebrity na. So many people looking for you. Hi, humans. Hello to my fans. I will release a merch soon. Dusty shirts. Hi, Cleo. Cleo. Hey, guys. Carlo here. Welcome to the vlog. This is the channel where we talk about sneakers, life tech, cats. Because I usually show cats. But for today, we're going to talk about business ways for you to earn additional income our topic for today is i will share with you my experience of how i was able to set up uh, a shop a physical shop for just 1500 pesos that's to secure the space usually when you when you think of setting up a shop just the rental alone will set you back tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of pesos but for this particular operation for this particular uh, mini business it all started with 1500 it's not network marketing i will not invite you to do anything i will not give you like free lunch then you listen to me this is just me sharing my experience let's go Now you've probably seen in previous episodes me promoting the steel cabinet. So the steel cabinet is basically shared or rented cabinet space uh, in a bigger shop. So the name of the shop is Pop and Shop. It's located at the collector's base, second floor at Theater Mall. Those cabinets are rented. Those cabinets, when you want to rent one of those cabinets, they, they, you just have to pay 1,500 pesos monthly. That's $30. So for just $30, you will have a cabinet where you can put stuff and you can sell stuff. Now, I've been doing it for well over two years now. And in today's episode, I want to share with you my learnings, the pros and the cons. So, simulan natin sa pros. When it comes to the good things, the first thing is the low cost. Because the rent is just 1,500. It's not big. It's not high. There are some people or some shops that sell it for a little bit higher, maybe 2,000 to 2,500. It is not heavy. As long as you're able to move and sell stuff, you're okay. There's no consignment fee, so they will not take like 10% of the total value of whatever it is that you're selling, they will you will really just have to pay the rental. You also don't need to hire your own staff to monitor the sales because there is a dedicated sales lady in the shop who will take care of collecting the cash, giving the change, updating you how many, how much items you've sold. Uh, the lady can turn over the cash to you when you need it or when you want to get it already. And those two things alone, that's massive savings. Massive savings on rent, massive savings on personnel cost. Now, the third thing that you can take advantage of is the free marketing. Because if you pick the right store, you can actually take advantage of good foot traffic. Because there are people who go to toy store shopping for, well, obviously, duh, toys, right? So if, if you can take advantage of that by having the same kind of product, then you can take advantage of the number of people going there. They'll see your, your stuff and then eventually they might start buying what you have to offer. So apart from the savings on the, the rental, you save on the operations with the sales lady, you also save, save money on the marketing. Now there are three uh, major cons as well and then I will share two recommendations. The first issue is the lower foot traffic these days because of the obviously the pandemic. Diba? My COVID pa, my virus so not a lot of people go out. From what I've experienced weekends are still relatively strong. People still go to the mall uh, during the weekends. They have the mask, they have the face shield so that that's good for them and and the sales during the weekdays are really dismal, abysmal compared to pre-COVID. But at least it spikes during weekends. Another major con obviously is the smaller space because you just can you can only work with a cabinet. Hindi malaking space yun. So you can only fill it with so much stock depending on what it is that you, you want to sell. So usually toys do really well because it takes up small space or NBA cards, Pokemon cards, uh, different types of collectibles that are small. And lastly, it's hard to build branding for your shop or your store because you are part of a collective. Unless you rent like a big space or multiple cabinets and you can brand it with the name of your shop, uh, you are just riding on the name of the actual shop itself. You're just another nameless cabinet on with display uh, with products on display. So yun yung mga problema. However, if you ask me, if you have a constant stream of products na either you get through flipping, buying and selling, or if you want to let go of existing items that you have in your house and you don't want to do it online, I really feel that if mag-align yung binibenta mo with the theme of the shop, 
you can really make good business. So for example, usually it's toy shops, so toys and collectibles. So if you are into toys, if you are into basketball cards, if you are into Pokemon cards, if you are into Magic the Gathering cards, if you are into art toys or designer toys. Uh, I, personally, I experimented with sneakers with a steel cabinet. It's been doing extremely well. So you can even do that as long as whatever it is that you are going to sell aligns with the market that the shop brings in, you can actually make a good business for yourself as long as you're able to, you know, uh, buy low, sell high. I feel that it is very low risk given the low cost. It is 1,500 pesos a month. As long as you have stock to sell, as long as you can buy low and sell high, as long as you can constantly find a way to replenish your items that you will sell in the cabinet and the items will align to the traffic that the store brings, I really feel it's a, you know, a good business that you can potentially try and get into. Hindi ganong kataas yung risk, hindi ganong kataas yung investment. Now, having said that, I do have two recommendations. So these two recommendations are for the businesses or for the people who set up the cabinet renting business. So this is for the people who own the shop who rent out the cabinets. So I have two recommendations. So the first recommendation is you might want to integrate it with e-commerce because I really feel that a lot of cabinet renters like me would be super, you know, happy to pay a little bit extra as long as the staff that you can hire can take care of online purchases. For example, somebody buys, we give them the address, they will be the ones to book the grab and send it and we can just pay them the shipping fee or whatever. There has to be a system in place for that because if you fix that, I really feel that it is, you know, a lot of, of sellers or merchants like me will flock to that particular setup. So somebody has to innovate and fix that system and bridge the offline with the online so that e-commerce na at hindi palagi people have to go to the cabinet to buy stuff. That's actually the reason why uh, a lot of you have been asking me to sell online eh hindi pa ready eh. So, <laughs> so sana eventually a cabinet renter business things of that and second it would be great if the cabinet renter or the, the owner of the shop markets the shop more aggressively so it's more of parang siguro once a week they take a look at all the items in the store and then they post it in all the different groups because that really helps the renters move stock because it's not just the space that that's the value that you can potentially give. It's also your ability to move units. That's the one thing that sneaker shops do really well. I'm talking about shops such as Seoul Republic, Yolo Manila, Cup Garden, because they market the shoes aggressively through social media. So when you consign, they will push it on Instagram. They will push it through their influencer contacts. They will push it through their Facebook pages. And that's how people find out about the shoes. And that's why it gets sold. Partly in my head, that's why you pay the 10% consignment fee. It's not just for putting the shoe in the shop. It's for the marketing that they do for your shoe. Anyway, that's actually it. I just wanted to shoot this quick vlog and, and see if people find it interesting. Uh, do you guys like videos like this? Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I would love to hear from you. If if you guys prefer more content like this, every now and then, I'll probably throw in uh, maybe, at, maybe at least once or twice a week just so we can have a break in between all the sneakers and the gadgets right, that we feature on the channel anyway that's it for me i hope you guys enjoyed by the way uh watch of the day this is the babe g-shock i will link it down below really nice watch super love this piece uh, it's a great mix of my love for streetwear together with technology and watches so it's it's one of my favorite time pieces so anyway so if you want to see the review i did an unboxing of this i'll link it down below so this is carla signing out i hope you guys have an amazing weekend up ahead and as usual peace god bless what's up boom